to a somber stream at 7 o'clock Eastern. We're not going to bring up what happened to my bears today. So instead, let's just hop right in. Talk about something a little more fun. What's up everyone? Let's fix some of these lights. That's better, now you can see me. How are you guys doing today? I am doing dandy. Um, so, we have a fun one for today, actually. So I wanna to talk to you guys about designing some sports cards. I've done like two little personal projects with sports cards before. Um, but we're gonna do a Mike Trout design. We're gonna do a booklet design because that's a little, a little more different. If you're not aware of what those look like, they look like what is on the screen here. It's usually a booklet that has two sides. It usually comes in a box instead of a pack. Let me see if I can find one. So like here's some examples on eBay. Some of these are, are three triple booklets, but we're gonna be making something similar to this, except vertical instead of horizontal. Let me just search sports card booklet. Yeah, so we're gonna make something like this. Usually a person on the left, and then you got some threads or, or whatever on the right. We're gonna probably throw his autograph in there as well. So when designing sports cards, there's a couple of different things you can do. And I actually asked a couple people in the card discord channel. I asked them what uh, they, let me put this down here. What, make, what makes a very good sports card to them? So let me open up card stuff. Let me hit some buttons real quick. All right, and here's what here's what they said. Now you can't really see it. So they liked they like things that are white, white sparkle, an action photo, white borders, simplicity of the font and colors, which is probably what we're gonna do. Shiny, clean formatting or layout, dynamic action shot. If it's a team color parallel. Someone said, I like shiny, clean lines and a quality photo. Um, personally enjoying a background that has meaning to the player. Placement of the auto and gloss versus colors. And then some super fractor stuff in there as well. So we're gonna focus on sort of a higher end product, but first things first. Hmm. There we go. That's better. Now we can really get in the groove with open up music for no reason because I put my headphones back on. Okay, so what I have, I did a little pre-work. This is what we have set up. So I have this booklet already created. This is similar to what you would find in my sports um, mock-up pack for cards. But this is obviously a booklet. I just mocked this up real quick today. And so what we have is we have the one touch here with the booklet, and then we have this file inside, which is what we're going to be editing. And I can show you what I did here real quick. So I don't want canvas size, I want image size. So this image, if we go to inches, is 3.77, it should be 7.5. 3.75 inches by three and a half. And what that is, a standard sports car is 10 and a half by three and a half inches. And then there's a little bit of a gap in between so they can actually fold together. So then over here, if you see, I've got left side, I've got the right side, and I've got the middle, which is this little part here. And I made these little folds by just duplicating the background and then adding a bevel and emboss so it looks like it is somewhat folding and somewhat realistic. 
So I've got that in the middle, and this is just a cardboard stock, because from what I've seen, a lot of the sports cards just have like a generic cardboard look to them. So this is what we're going to actually be designing in. We're going to be designing the left and right side. We're going to do them separately, but they're going to independently lock, um, go together. So first things first, we need some assets. So here's some stuff I have. So I've got, got the Angels logo. I'm going to need that. We've got a couple photos of Mike Trout. Some of these are older photos. I used actually my 365. Uh, but we're going to use this main photo for Mike Trout. So let me drop that in. This is a photo I edited for my Patreon community in a video. And it's a photo I've been wanting to use for a while. So we're going to put that on the left side. Whoops. Maybe not. Left side. And in this layer, so what I have in all of these is I just have this rectangle background just so there's something in here. I have this layer right here, which is a little bit of a gloss. So this is giving it some realism. And then I just have this other texture, which is in my other card pack. If I open that and let me show you. If I fill this with black, so it's just sort of like this faint edge. So it looks a little bit um, realistic. A little bit of some edge issues, I should say. Hello, Manuel. How's it hanging? So I'm going to put these two on top. I'm actually going to group these together and name it top stuff. Top stuff. I'm going to lock that layer so we can't edit it. Now I'll lock the bottom just because. So we've got Mike Trout here. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. So if we, if I want to look at this, what I want to do is I want to figure out the composition of how we want things laid out. Oh, I also have somewhere. Let me find it. I have a uh, patch. So I downloaded a photo. This is sort of this is sort of what we're gonna make. Now this is blurry and looks terrible, but this is what a real card would look like. He would be on one side with an auto signature, and then they usually just have a square cut out for some sort of patch. So that's what I'm grabbing now. I'm grabbing the patch. And the patch is going to go on the right side. Let me group some of this stuff up. Lock this, lock this, move this over. So here's an angel patch. And theoretically, you know, if we think about my hat, you know, how tall this is compared to, you know, I've got an actual card here. But, you know, it's going to take up most of the card. So I'm going to drop it down just to make it like that. Now I could probably go in and be like, this is the exact size of what this card, what this would look like. But that can go there. We've got a little bit of left side, right side. We're going to need a spot for the autograph. So I'm just going to draw a box here. And I'm just going to put this down here. This is where our autograph can go. Maybe I can make it a little bit smaller. So we've got these. We've got where we want our patch to go. We've got this edited photo. And I can show you guys real quick if you'd like. Open this photo up. This photo is huge. File size wise. I spent a lot of time editing this photo and I haven't used it yet. So this is 8,000 pixels wide. This photo is huge. This is what the photo looked like before I edited anything. And then this is what it looks like afterwards. And it's using the same editing technique that I've showed you guys in most of my videos. Um, with a lot of enhancing, playing around with your eye color, playing around with the teeth, brightening those up. Um, but that's the photo. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. So here we go. We've got Mike Trout here. I'm going to have his head up somewhere like that. And then I'm going to pull this other photo of him batting. And we're going to have that sort of here below him. Now let me get rid of this. You know, compositionally, you've seen videos I've made before. I like to have big guy, little guy, and then we go on from there. So what I'm going to do, I actually, I 
actually also have this other photo, which I think is going to play in very well with this photo. Hey, Matt. Welcome, welcome. So here's what we're going to do. So I have this photo of Angel Stadium that I took on my honeymoon. So it's just outside Angel Stadium. I think it's a pretty sweet photo. So we're going to use this as sort of a background for the whole shebang. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link these layers together. I'm going to blow it up like that. And we're going to put it at the bottom of each side. So now we have our base as a background. I think it's pretty nice. Um, we'll do some editing to that. You know, maybe maybe we get rid of it completely. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna get a brush that is super soft, super wide. I'm gonna blow this up. Set it to 20%. No longer see it. I'm just gonna sort of vignette it back in. And then I'll just drag that over and apply it to that as well. Now the background colors that I locked, I just made them a standard gray. I'm actually gonna throw those back to white because I think that'd be more realistic to what a sports card would have. So I'm gonna put these back to white. We've got sort of our Angel Stadium in the background. Let me make it more apparent here in the middle. It's only applying to one, but I can just drag and replace the layer mask. There we go. I'm going to save this. This is already then. <laughs> so this file is already too big because this Mike Trout photo is huge. So we're going to save this as a PSB file. I'm going to save that to my desktop. And then that will automatically... Do not show again. That will automatically update in this area here. Now we're saving it as a different file, so it's not going to link. So I'm actually going to right click, replace contents, find that booklet and hit enter. And then boom, there's our cart right there in the case. So that's what we want. That's what we want to happen. So I want to focus on this area over here first. I found this patch online. I just Googled a uh, patch. I thought about taking like a photo of my hat, which would probably work pretty well. Um, but I just wanted to find something quickly. And you like to use stuff that I make myself. Like I have this hat. I could have just taken a photo of this patch. Um, I took this photo of Angel Stadium in the background. But I wanted to show you some examples too of some cards. If you're not familiar with the card community or cards with patches. It's like here's a card I have. Devin Hester card. It's just got a part of a patch on it. So a lot of cards you'll see will just have random parts of a patch. You can't really tell what they are. Now this one you can see looks kind of like a three. Devin Hester was number 23. So this is sort of like a shoulder patch. Some stuff is also player worn. Some stuff is game worn. But you can see a lot of times you'll get a patch that looks like this, three color patches. You might even get patches that are just um, they're napkins, as we like to call them. They're just one, one part. It'd be, you know, like uh, just the, a random part of the back of his jersey or the shoulder with nothing on it. Here's another different example of like a collegiate one where there's some cool texture in there too with stuff. But those are some examples I wanted to share, sort of the high end that I want to go with with this, with this design. So here we have this Angels patch. Now I'm going to go ahead and Pull up a selective color layer and I'm going to tweak the colors a little bit. I want to take away a little bit of the magenta and add some yellow. And it's going to, I want to match this color over here that we have. That's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more magenta. Really just this is kind of dull and this looks a lot better. So we've got that going on. Okay, now I'm not going to make a standard patch that's just a big block cut out of here um, because this is a fake card. We're going to do something cooler than that uh, because this isn't going to be produced. The reason they do square stuff is they got to mass produce a bunch of this stuff to make it easier. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to selective color, not selective color. So I'm thinking about what I want to do here. So I'm going to take this selection and I'm going to, here's one thing I can do, select, modify, expand. So what I want to do is I want to make a sort of a housing for this. Let's see what 50 pixels looks like. That's what I thought. Okay, here's what we're gonna do instead. We're going to make some shapes that we're gonna use as the frame for this. So I'm gonna make a couple shapes and I'm just gonna try and match the outside size of what it would be. And I'm gonna use the pen tool for this. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> because it doesn't matter. So so gear up, you are experiencing some pen tool. We'll just put it down there like this. Swipe up like that, click. Um, swipe down, sort of like this. Go to about here. Oh, that's a good idea. We're not, we're not doing this anymore. That's a way better idea, Neptune. All right, so we're gonna open up Illustrator. Yeah, hey, why don't you just use the vector version? That's such, that's such a better idea. All right, so I've got the SVG here. Let me open that up. So like, boom, look. Here's their logo. All right, here we go. So we got this. If I double click the SVG files, they're gonna open an Illustrator automatically or is it gonna open up? There it is, okay, good. Okay, we don't need no rights reserved. We'll get rid of that. All right, so now what we can do is we've got this grouped together and we can just go to object, path, offset path. This is gonna be a lot easier if this is just one Thing. Okay, offset path. And then we can choose how we want to offset the path. Now this is six pixels. Five pixels. So that looks good. Thank you for the way better idea, Neptune. I'll paste that. Put it below the patch. Now I pretty much just have to line these up. Now the issue is path is a little bit different than this logo but it doesn't matter it gets us where we want to be ah, stretch it up a little bit move it over good good great grand wonderful there all right I'm gonna group this stuff together and name it patch and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller All right, sweet. So here we have this patch now. So what I want to do with this area is I want to have, I want an inner shadow. So it looks like it's coming from the inside. It looks like there's something on top of it. Hey, Oliver. Hey, Garcia. So we're going to do multiply on top of this. I like to do stuff at, um, like 130 degree angles. I think this is too far. I just wanna play around with this so it looks correct. And then what we can do is we need a setting for this patch. So I'm gonna hop over into my trusty assets. Go to my stock images, go to my sports textures. And I'm gonna find a sports texture that makes sense. Nope. Boom. Oh, what is this one? Nope. Wait. I'll use this one, it's already red. So we're gonna drop that into the design.
which is going to take eight years for some reason. So we're going to drop it in. I'm going to keep it somewhat big because it is a patch, so it would be you would be able to see some of that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and sample some of the red from his hat. I'm going to go to adjust in, adjustments. I'm going to pull up our handy dandy friend, the gradient map. Gradient map. And I'm going to select them black. I'm going to drag this over. That's too dark. That's pretty decent. We've got that going on there, so that's good. We have this angels patch there. I'm going to give this a slight drop shadow. And I'm actually going to... I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. So I don't want to do that. I guess I can sharpen it in camera raw. I just sharpened it a little bit and there's nothing worth showing. We've got this here. We've got this cool looking patch. I kind of want this to be a little bit bigger. Oops, not the patch. I want the background to be bigger. I want the gradient map to only apply to that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate via smart object create a new smart object via copy on this, which is what we just have here. And then in Illustrator, I'm going to swap it and I'm going to give it an outside stroke like that. And then save and go back. And now we have an outside stroke. Now I want the outside stroke to not have this inner shadow. So I'm gonna take it out of that group, patch interior, so I'm gonna use this as a patch exterior. So what I want this to be is I want this to be gold. Let me let me quickly remind um, Instagram that I'm live. That might be helpful. Boom. Cool. Okay, so in my assets, in stock images, I have a folder titled gold. So I've got some random gold stuff in here. And not all of this is going to apply, but we want sort of a gold holographic paper or gold paper. And there's a couple in here I think I've used before. This one's, this one's nicer. So I'm just gonna drag this on top and we're going to Apply it to that. Now it's got too much texture to it. Which is not what I want. I think it looks cool. It's got too much texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blur it. Give it a bit of a Gaussian blur. Uh, two pixels, one pixel. Let's just do one pixel. And some stuff's a little offline. So I'm gonna make sure that this vector smart object, I'm actually gonna make sure all this stuff is linked. So then if I move it a little bit, it moves it for everything. All right, so there we go. So we've got this patch over here and this area. Now I'm going to select this whole thing. I'm gonna make the mask I'm gonna mask everything to the inside, even though everything's already clipped in there, because I might wanna do something like this and just try and give like a more realistic part of it, it has a shadow on it. We can do that, I can move the patch around just a little bit, but you can see we have a little bit of a problem area right here, because this doesn't attach, so that's clearly a problem. So what we can do is I'll just mask that out of both of these. Now you can't see my brush because it's giant. So we'll make it tiny. And now I have caps lock on so you can't see it. Ah, actually. I'll just go into the smart object and delete it. And that will solve that problem there. And then I think I need to go into this one. 
and delete it as well. But I did that and it took the stroke to the inside. Save, 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 go back. I wanna save all of these smart objects. Oh, I need to get rid of this layer mask now. And there we go. And actually I need to delete this layer mask because there we go. All right, that looks better. Looks a little bit more realistic sitting inside some sort of housing. Now I need this to be masked to this. So we'll mask that. There we go. What's up, Alex? Yeah, I'm probably gonna turn this into a one of one, but what's my chat's number? 27? <laughs> I might not make this a one of one. I might make this a 27 of 27 or something like that. Make it a uh, a number. Okay, so we got the patch area done for the most part. Um, and we've got Mike Trout over here. So what we want is we want some stuff to bring these two things together. So what you'll see on a lot of cards, I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna select Contract, let's contract 75 pixels. Let's try that again, modify, contract. Oh, if, apply effect at canvas bounds, there we go. That's too much. Basically what I wanna do is, I'm just gonna make a rectangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to make some gold framing to frame everything in together. Oliver, I like baseball in general. The A's aren't my favorite team. I do have an A's hat. An A's, this is not Oakland. Angels, Angels hat. Um, I've been in the habit of anytime we go and visit a sports field, I'll pack, I'll pick up a hat. I got a bunch of hats. Garcia, I don't, I haven't printed any of these cards, like actually print them out. Um, I would probably find someone local that specializes in printing specifically. That way I can go do the checks manually. So I don't know if there's an, I don't know if there's an, I wouldn't really trust an online company because there's so much to figure out with colors and approvals for something that would cost as much. I think, it, I feel like it would cost a bit more to do this. Um, okay. So let me select all, modify, modify, contract. Let's just do like 50 pixels. I have this work path now. Whoops, whatever. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna frame this stuff in with just some, whatever these are called, guides. And then we're gonna make a quick, I like using guides because everything snaps to them. So I'm gonna throw this on top of everything. And we're gonna give this a quick stroke. Let's see what four looks like. Four looks good. So I'm gonna duplicate that. Make it about 10 pixels smaller. I'm gonna align to the canvas and throw that in the middle. But that's not, that's not how things work. Delete, delete. So we'll select this. Select, modify, contract, five pixels. Select, modify, contract. There's a bunch of different ways I could be doing this. It'd probably be easier to just do this in Illustrator and bring it all in. But we'll just do it this way. Did it, it's totally snapped to that, didn't it? Yep, I don't want that. There, all right. So what we're doing is we're gonna make the frame. So we're gonna get rid of this fill. We've just got a sort of a basic framed in area here. 
and we want to group this together. I'm gonna name this frame. We're gonna take that same stock image. And we're gonna to toss it on top of that. So all the, I need to unlink it after I duplicate it. That way I can move it around. So we've got one there. I'll duplicate it, move it over here. We don't need it in the middle because that doesn't matter. We're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna put it in each side. So it doesn't really matter what we do with it now. Now I do think, I think the frame's a little too big or a little too, it's, it's inset too much. We don't have enough padding. That's better. Make this a little bit bigger. Do that, do one of these. I'll just make this bigger. Just because. Now if I hit save and go back here, we'll see what happens. I already know what's gonna happen. Nothing. Because this is linking to the desktop, it's not linking. Or once it's in here, it's linking to somewhere inside Photoshop. Okay, so now we have this frame in the area. So now we can edit inside this frame. I probably should have done this from the beginning because I need to now make this patch slightly smaller. And the reason being is because it, we don't want it to go on the inside of it. I'm trying to think if we can take this patch because I want this side to be cool looking. Might just add some other stuff around it. But like for me, being a designer, these edges are bugging me. So let me unlink this real quick. I'm gonna move that over. I guess it's just like a real sharp area and it's like real close to here, but isn't, and it's real close over here. So it's sort of like a, what are we gonna do with that? That's what I'm thinking in my head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put down on the right hand side, I'm gonna put uh, just the team he's on. I'm gonna do the Los Angeles Angels, make it a lot smaller, a lot smaller, very small. We've got the Los Angeles Angels here. We're gonna center that to this A center to the middle of the A here. And this is a this is a fake higher end card, so we're gonna use a fake higher end font. So it makes sense. There's a lot of different ways you can design a sports card. I'm going the more traditional route for you guys just in the stream of what like uh, what tops would make. Because what they have to make is scalable. They have to be able to apply this card template to, you know, 15 guys who are all-stars or the 15 top guys. Um, whereas like the tops 2020 or the tops 70 project, the artists of those cards are the reimagining cards that already exist, but they can do whatever they want. They can make it more of just a general art piece than something that needs to be scalable. I want this to, I basically want this to like fool a angels fan into thinking this card exists. Like that's the objective, essentially. So I can find, let me find you one more thing. As you can see when I'm typing. So there's a, uh, I want football. So there's a product coming out called National Treasures. That's a high-end product very expensive and they have a card in there and I'll show you they have a card in there like this and this is sort of like what we're doing so this has some more I don't want I don't want that I don't want this to play so you can see it's got a stadium it's got where the signature goes on top um, and it's got some players on it and some stuff going around the edges so we can play around with that oops hey here's the stream say hello Yeah, I have, I've got a couple National Treasures cards. They're very nice. Hello, Chris, welcome. Good morning from the UK. 
So I want to use a serif font because I want this to be fancy. I don't know if there's a specific font. I'm just going to use copper plate. I'm going to hit a big old default button. When I was in college, we used to make fun of copper plate all the time. Just because it's used everywhere by like just silly, um, silly companies. People think it looks nice and they use it for their, you know, I don't know, watering business around town or something like that. Good morning from Hungary as well. Thank you for joining me. Okay. So as you can see, we have some issues already with this text. The issue being we can't read it. So I'm going to tweak. <laughs> I'm going to unlink the layer and then rotate it. So I'm going to tweak the gold we're using so we can see it. And then also I'm going to put this in a group together. Uh, angels text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give it a bevel and an emboss on the inside. I want it to go downward. So what we're doing is we're saying, I'm trying to make it look like it's indented into the card because that's what the card would be. It would have a slight indent. So I'm gonna take this here. Now the weird thing is, is the way the shadow's going, that's not what I want. Maybe I want the direction to be up. Really, it's going to cause one of those illusion things where you can't really tell what it's doing anyway. Say hello to my dog, Penny, you can hear running around. Okay, so we were going to add a bevel and emboss to that. Now the issue is we can't see the texture. I'm going to ungo I'm going to unblur that so we can see the texture on it. Now we can see it says Los Angeles Angels down here. Okay, great. We've got Los Angeles Angels. We've got this here. Um, we've got Mike Trout. Let me grab his signature real quick. The easiest place to find the signatures of athletes. Well, one is from, you know, the team or whatnot. Is I just go to eBay and I just look for one on there. So I'm gonna search Mike Trout Auto. Find me a nice card. Um, sorry. So there's a difference between the two main card companies are Tops and Panini. Tops has the MLB rights. Panini has the rights to football. I'm gonna just grab this real quick. So you won't really find Panini cards, you'll find tops cards. That's just what they have the rights for. I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to hijack this photo from eBay, save it to the downloads, get out of here. All right, so now we're going to throw this in here. We're in the right side of the frame. We want this to be in the left side of the frame. Boom. All right, here it is. We're just going to make this a little bit bigger. Actually, what I can do is I can just make this to the size roughly of this card. Something like that. Who knows? And then we'll just mask everything out except for the signature. We'll just mask this back in and we'll use this as the signature. I want to try something. You can see this is grainy. You can see how grainy this is. Uh, we're just going to go up to, we're going to double click this and open it and zoom in. We're going to go to filters and we're going to go to neural filters. We're going to try this out see what this does. See if it crashes the stream. I got to download this. Um, so we're going to do the JPEG artifacting removal, which just removed it right there. This is before, this is after. That looks way better. 
So now if we flatten this file, save it, maximum quality, go out, here it is here. There's a little bit of yellow to it. You can see around the edges. So I'm gonna to go to adjustments. I'm gonna to go to hue and saturation, yellows. I'm going to select that yellow, apply this only the, to that layer. And I'm under master, I don't want master, I want yellows. And I'm gonna drop the color. So now we just have this nice little signature that I can then say signature. And I usually set them to multiply. We're gonna have this on white. So we're gonna be fine with that. Now we can see a little bit of stuff through it. You know, you can see the texture of whatever. No, you can't, that's not the texture, that's background. But we do need to make this a little bit lighter. I'm just gonna hop into the levels and just peek it over a little bit. And then I'm gonna get rid of the other stuff in here as well. Okay, so the signature is the right size. We want the signature to stay here. Let me hide these real quick. I'm gonna put this back. So this is about where we said we wanted it. I'm gonna put this up a little bit higher. I'm going to set this square to be white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it an inner glow. I'm gonna give it an inner glow multiplied 100%. Like that. I want the range to be 100 and I'm just gonna increase the size a little bit like that and then set it to screen. So I'm gonna put that in a new group, then set it to screen. And that's not really what I wanted. That's fine. All right, get rid of the inner glow. We're just gonna mask it. We're going to invert the mask and I'm going to grab a gradient map and with white selected, I'm going to go down here. Not a gradient map, it's just a gradient. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just finding a, I'm just making a nice white spot for this signature to go into or where a designated spot they're supposed to sign. And underneath that, it's gonna say his name, Mike Trout, because that's what a lot of sports cards would say. So I'll make the same Mike Trout, Mike Tort, Mike Trout. And then we're gonna sort of align this to this bottom area. We're gonna have it the same height as this now. So I'm going to move the angels and Mike Trout down just a little bit. We've got a signature here. Maybe I duplicate it another time. Um, this. I'm just going to duplicate it and set the multiply to 55. That way it's got a little more color to it. Polygraph. All right, I'm gonna hit save, so we have this saved. I wanna make this a little fancier though. So like I'll give you, I'll give you an example. So these are two booklet cards I have. So a lot of the times they'll just throw a sticker on them too. So like I have, I've got two booklet, booklets here and they both have signatures on it. So how they, how they sign sports cards. A lot of times they'll just send them sheets of stickers and they just sign every sticker. And it's like hundreds of stickers, thousands of stickers. So then they'll just have a spot for them where they basically put the sticker. So it'll be like a spot I put on here. They put a sticker. Sometimes it's a little more prominent and it has a back edge to it. But I wanted to look at these to see how these are sort of framed in because usually they're framed in a little bit. We're gonna do that on here. But we actually don't need to do that on here because this isn't a sticker. So, instead of having a sticker, we've got this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to, going to delete 
the layer mask we had. And I'm going to go in from the outside, or from the inside, like this. And then I will grab that layer mask, spread it out just a little bit. Put that there, move it up a little bit. What is this? What am I even, well, it's not even, what are we doing here? There we go. Yeah, Oliver, I don't do a lot of soccer stuff, but it's, you know, the most popular, second most popular sport in the world. Most popular. I'm thinking between that and cricket. A lot of people love cricket. I might do one one of these days. Um, I don't know who specifically. So we've got his autograph. We've got Mike Trout down here. I'm just looking to see what other information, you know, they put on these cards. These guys actually used copper plate on here as well which is funny for this card and these cards usually have a back too that will tell you information about it who's on it and whatnot we're probably not going to do that today we're just going to do the part you can actually see but this is where this is what you would actually pull out of the box so i'll pull this one out i'll show you the other one's a one of one so i don't want to pull it out for this one you'll get a little a box that has a little top on it and you pull it out so this is what the card will come out as so then it's an actual booklet you open it and you can see who the autos are or you can look on the back as well but to display the cards you put them in these nice double booklet one touches like i have there so we've got mike trout if you do marcus rashford i'm going to be honest i've never heard of that person before but again, I don't pay attention to a lot of soccer, so that's probably why. All right, so now we've got these guys back. So I'm going to make this Mike Trout a little softer. I want to frame everything inside of this area. So we're going to do like this. And honestly, these are generally vignetted pretty hard. So I'm going to hit the old vignette button like this. We can do full up here, a little bit of vignette down here below. Maybe we just get rid of this. Maybe we bump this photo up a little bit. I do want some contrast, make it a little bit smaller. Maybe we don't even include it. Let's just not even include it. We don't need it. We've got this dope photo of Mike Trout right here. We don't need no other stinking photos. Vignette, vignette, vignette. Pop them back in. I just want to make sure there's a nice clean break for these. All right, save. We've got that going on. So the question is, what do we want to add next? We want to add small details that are going to make this look nice. That's the thing with sports cards is they usually have a lot of little details with it, which make it um, with the details are what makes it special because a lot of times they have to be scalable because we need to make sure that we can apply this to again, 15, 20 different, 30 different guys. All right, so we've got the sport card here. Now I have this frame. So I'm going to copy this frame. I'm going to put it in here. So now it's in the right side here. I'm actually putting it on top of our texture area because this would be applied on top of that. So it wouldn't apply to it most likely. And I have this levels layer set to 50%. It's also locked, so I can't touch it. I'm going to jump that back up to like 75. I really want you to be able to see that blur or this sheen because that sheen is the whole point of making this look real so we're going to paste that frame there so we've got that going on so that's good so let me go back in here to this top stuff we're going to go to levels 75 save so honestly this would be a pretty solid card just to get 
right here where it's at right now. Um, let's see what it looks like in this frame. We're going to replace the contents. We're going to grab this giant booklet. It's going to take eight years to load. That looks cool. There's a lot of, it's pretty basic in a lot of areas still. But that's pretty cool. Okay, so what we're going to do, we need to add the actual logo somewhere. So let's do that. We're gonna add the actual logo to the right side. Underneath all this good stuff. I don't know who Jake Cutler is. Oh, Matt Roper, congratulations. Congratulations. You had my subscriber, who's the what's it go off, which has only happened once once on stream, so thank you. <laughs> I don't even know who Jay Cutler is. All right, so what we're going to do, we got the right side, we got the left side now. So up here in the top right hand corner, this is usually where you would type like one of one in some fancy font that they use that's proprietary. I'm going to type 27 out of 27. Because these cards are all going to have numbers to them. Like this card, this card here, it's not going to show up probably. It's too shiny. There. This card's 4 of 10. You all can't see it, but that's fine. So 4 of 10. I'm doing 27 out of 27 because that's his jersey number. People on the internet like to and we want this to be above it as well yes Garcia most of you guys already are subscribers which I appreciate uh, what do we want to do we want to do a bevel and emboss and we want it to be down and then we want the light to do other stuff like that One pixel. 25. Perfect. I'm doing 27 out of 27 because it's his jersey number. And people love jersey number cards. I'm just trying to think of how big I want to make that. I think that's pretty good. Okay, I also want to give the border that same bevel. So I need to bevel the border. I need the right side. Angel's text, bevel the border. Perfect. All right, so we got ourselves a nice little card here. We got a nice little angel stadium in the background. We got Mike Trout there. Hat is getting tight on my head, which is Funny. All right, I'm going to save here and then we're going to figure out what else we want to put on this. Because we want this to look realistic. So if I look at some of these cards, I mean, really being realistic and like lighting on there is going to be a thing. So let's do that. We got our left side and our right side. Left side up top. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna see what this does. Nothing, probably. Five. Zero, five, zero. Off, on. That <laughs> does absolutely nothing. All right. I'm gonna save. We're gonna we're gonna replace the contents of this. Look out for ghosts. So what I want to do probably is I want to find a spot to add what this is. You know, what is the title of this card series? What is the brand? You know, if we go back to that football card I showed you guys. I'm not going to click on it. So this one you can see on the front, it says Gridiron Graphs, National Treasure Dallas Cowboys, Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman. 
And there's other cool stuff we can do around the si sides. So we're gonna do that too. Because that's gonna look that's gonna look cool. So I'm gonna take my trout here, trout edited. I'm gonna make them a little bit just a little bit smaller. Maybe we can put it on the inside here. Usually put it up here at the top. If you guys have any suggestions on what we should name this, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to put some other stuff going on in here. I'm actually gonna fix this image. So this image has a home plate on it. So I want it to actually be perfectly in center. So we're gonna fix that. And it fixed both because that's what we wanted. So that's good. All right, we got Mike Trout here. I think I know what'll help a lot of this is if we go to the adjustments, we add a little bit of a color look up to this. We put it on everything. It looks a little bit better. Now, hypothetically, this would be a laminated front, so it wouldn't really have a color to it, and it wouldn't really have a texture to it. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take that that color fill we have in the background. I'm going to give it just like the most faint coloring. Just so it's so, just so slightly tan. Tan, I just wanna make it tan. I don't know why I'm talking like that. We're gonna make this one the same faint color. Save, good, good, good. Um, let's name this, I don't like this font. Let me look at these. One of one they use a specific, so the way Panini does this and it's not the same as Tops is this. Nope, 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 nope. Don't like that. This 27 needs to be more generic, just like a router. Do I have a router? I think I've used Oswald. Have I used Oswald in the past? Really what I want is I want a, I want a rounded font. I want a narrow rounded font or a narrow soft font. It doesn't really matter. Because again, this is a fake sports card. But we're using ripped soft fold because that's what that's what we want. And then we're just gonna bump this back up to like 10. Separate it a little bit. Save. Okay, cool. Good, great, grand, wonderful. All right, we got Mike Trout. I'm gonna add underneath that Mike Trout's position, which is Left field, Mike Trout, center, okay, duh. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to type center fielder. We're gonna get rid of all this dumb space we don't need. And we're gonna make this itty bitty. Sure. That's too, okay, that's too small. Myriad Pro might work. So you got Mike Trout center fielder. I'm gonna bump that up just a little bit. The bump up Los Angeles Angels. I'm actually gonna bump this whole patch down slightly. Okay. So now I wanna add some stuff that goes in the background. So I'm gonna use the red we used from before. And I'm just gonna kind of create some little bit of a pattern with it. Um, just make something with some lines that's not generic, but just something, something simple with some lines that are baseball related somewhat. Again, we're making up the rules so we can really do whatever we want. 
So I'm just going to frame this in. Everybody likes stripes. We got some stripes going on here. Let's hit one of these buttons, group this together and align it to the canvas so it's dead center. Let's see if that actually worked. Hey, there we go. Okay, so this is where figuring out how we want things to look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the frame I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this outside frame, invert my selection, and then apply it to this. So it's just showing up in the background. So this is again, framing it in even more. Let's learn more about the rectangle tool. So this goes away. There we go. I'm gonna hit save on this. So we've got that going on. It doesn't look terrible. We wanna add some texture to this though just for funsies. Let's go to my assets, let's go to stock images, let's go back to those sports environments, sports environments, sports textures. Grab this, set it to multiply, make it real small. Throw it on one end, duplicate it, throw, on the, throw it on the other end. Select this. Actually want to expand this a couple pixels it looks like. So it's not on top of the beveled area. So we got my trap there, so that looks cool. This stuff is all coming together. Uh, we can play around with this area a little bit more. Let's add, let's add some lines that are three pixels thick. What do these look like? Can I not see them? No, I can't because they're in there. Duplicate this. So I'm gonna make a group and I'm just gonna name these lines. We're gonna apply the, we're gonna apply this gold texture to it, and we're gonna make the lines the same bevel and emboss. And I might do this slightly differently, but we'll we'll take a look. It's like on one of those cards, sort of the the pattern they had. Oops. Nope. So I'm just going to. Align up some of these. Align up. Line up some of these. And then we're going to rotate the whole deal. 45 degrees. And slap that in the corner. Kind of like that. Yeah. Just like that. So we're going to duplicate that. We're going to take those lines. We're going to, I like just to go to width and hit negative 100 and it'll flip it horizontally. And then I can put that over here in the same spot. I of course need some gold to go over it. So we'll put some gold over it over there. And then we can just group these together and name this top lines. I can then duplicate it and then I'll rotate this 180 degrees. And then I'm going to get lost in my design. There they are. Ah, there we go. I need to move these guys down so we can actually find them. Yeah. Where are these lines at? <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Top lines copy. There's one set, there they are. Okay, we found all the lines. So we just need this bad boy to line up. Something like that. 
Those are good to go. This we can get rid of. This here. This is for the right side. Sort of match that. These lines are over there. We can brighten those up. They're just a little dark. Cool. Save, save, save. Um, let's throw some other stuff on here. Don't get me wrong, but you look like Gruncho glasses. I have no idea. I have no idea what that is. Let's take a let's take a look. Oh yeah, sort of Groucho Groucho Marx glasses. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, let's see here. What do we want to add to this? So now we're just sort of adding some extra flair to make this a little bit more presentable. We've got the autograph here. I want these to be combined. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this group here. I'm going to... Yeah, I'll just create a line. That's three pixels like we just did. I'm just going to make it the width of this. I'm going to take our gold. Toss it on top of that. Toss it on top of that. I'm gonna get rid of the Gaussian blur. We're gonna bevel and emboss it. And a lot of things I'm doing, I'm holding down the option key and tossing it down there. Except I need to group this together. It's already in a group. I need the group to be beveled and embossed. But it's gonna mess up that down there. That's fine. Because I'm going to take this and put it on the top here. And I'm going to duplicate it and put it on the bottom as well. Ah, this is set to screen. We don't want it to set to screen. That's why it looked so weird. There. Now we've got a gold area like this. So we can go in here, we can take these lines and actually give them the same. Yeah, like that. Sweet. The only thing I might want to do now with this is make the signable area a little bit bigger. Ah, oh, what's up, Chris? We got voodoo in the house. That is Chris, by the way. He has his own action named after him in my actions pack, and he has his own GIF on my streams. Why? I don't know, just cause. All right, so we're gonna make the autograph area a little bit bigger because we want this to be like super cool and pristine and we want his autograph to fit in here perfectly. So make his autograph just a little bit smaller. So now it's in this area. I feel like we got rid of the bevel and emboss on this. All of the clarity. Yeah, here, let me show you. Let me show you humorously what his, what his action does. All right, boom, look, we got this super awesome photo. Boom, Mike Trout. Go down and hit the voodoo button. I hope we saved. Boom, look at that. Look at that. Maybe pop up the curves a little bit. Maybe pop up the curves a bunch. Apply it to only the dark areas. There you go. That doesn't look too bad. Maybe we just pop open one of these. Rendering smart filters. Uh, and just bump up the shadows 
So this is the voodoo one. I don't think I've ever used it before. I mean, it really just looks like topaz. Like crazy topaz. All right, don't save, don't save. Save. All right, we added some tweaks. Let's replace the contents. I could just edit the contents and do everything all in Photoshop, but I don't really want to do that. Yeah, see, that looks better. Stuff around the sides. I think we could use some more still. Oops. Save. Okay, so we're going to I'm gonna bump trap back up. And then we're going to grab this Los Angeles Angels. We're gonna to toss it up here. And I'm gonna say angelic matches. So that's what this is now called. It's now called angelic patches. Just thinking, thinking, thinking. We have angelic patches. We want this, all of this text to be on top. We want it to be on top of that. But I just broke it. Where was this at? Why are you the way you are? This. Angel's text above group one. Great. Man, I'm just breaking everything right now. Boom, there we go. Jeez. All right, we're gonna copy this and we're gonna bring the texture with it. Angelic patches. Never spell patches correctly, why would you? Went to design school, not English school. So we've got angelic patches, Los Angeles angels. I'm going to try and balance this all with the patch in between it. Sort of like that. We got to move this now because this we can't have this over here. So we're going to move this over here. We're going to put it somewhere correctly. This is why you name your layers. Boom. Now we got the A there. I might put it over here. I think I know what I might do with that. So what I want to do... We've got angelic patches over here. That's the fake name we just gave that. Let's make this patch a little bit bigger. Right? Let's make it teeny bit bigger. Boom. I got crap blown up on my phone for some reason. Okay. We got 27 out of 27 here. I'm going to move this to somewhere else because we're going to take this Angel Stadium, whoa, <laughs> Angel Stadium, no, 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 no. We're going to take the Angels logo and we're going to put it up here. I'm just going to move this over here for now. Maybe it stays there, maybe it doesn't. Maybe we get rid of it because realistically the number would be on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here. I really want Trout to be facing the other way now. Let's make him smaller. Center him a little bit. Okay, so what I want is I want this A to be bigger like this. We're gonna make this A gold. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna duplicate. Yep, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna duplicate it, we're gonna do that. We're gonna make it a lot smaller. We're gonna get rid of the Gaussian blur. Perfect. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit new object via copy. I'm gonna do that four times. Maybe five times total. I'm gonna name this white. I'm gonna name this blue. I'm gonna name this ring. I'm gonna name this dark and I'm gonna name this red. And here's what we're gonna do. These are all now individual smart objects. So I'm gonna select each color that it's labeled, delete everything except for that color, paste it back, save it, go back. And basically what we're gonna do is we're going to make individual layers with each of these colors. And then we're gonna turn those individual layers a different version of gold, different angle of gold, I should say. Okay, we actually want white on the bottom. The other one shouldn't matter. And we're gonna have to mess around with this slightly. So let me make a new layer. And I'm just gonna put a black shape behind it. If you ever wanna make logos look a little bit cooler, this is a good way of doing it. All right, so I want the blue to line up. So I'm just gonna nudge the blue around until it lines up. Sort of like that. Let me get the red to line up with the dark red. It doesn't have to be perfect. So the red and the dark red can now go down a little bit. Maybe one over. And then we can toss that ring back up to the top where it was. Now we have our ring. So now what I can do is I can turn on this layer and delete this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically rotate the gold on each one of these layers. Which theoretically is going to allow me to create a gold looking A that's somewhat embossed. That's the theory, at least. We'll see if it actually works. But you can kind of tell here. Yeah, that looks like a gold, eh? That looks cool. Actually turned out to be exactly what we wanted, so that's nice. We're gonna group those together. We're gonna give it the same bevel and emboss. Except we want that to be down. It's too soft. Let's just change this opacity to be 75. So you can't even tell that it's going down, which is weird. Let's change it back to one. Let's just give this a little bit of a gradient overlay. Maybe not. All right, we'll get, we'll get rid of that, back, back out. Boom, okay. There we go. So far, so good. We're just trying to make something that any Angels fan would love to have in their collection, which I feel like they would like this here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna add some more stuff that goes across the whole, the whole area. Um, so I'm going to take a rectangle and go like this. I'm going to bust out this area so it lines up like that. Yeah, I want a regular path. Like, that's the whole point of this guy. What are you talking about? I put it up there. Let's give it some gold. I want to know where the gold's at. Give me the gold. I want the gold. Come on. 
Yeah, I forget where I learned how to do that application of making it look like that. But it definitely looks cool. So I got rid of the Gaussian blur on this. Gaussian blur, however you want to say it. I just wanted to sort of match everything else, and right now it's not because it's too yellow. I think right there is good. Let me blur it again. That's good. I think I need to bevel and emboss it though. This looks a little funky. So I'm going to take this. What I want to do, I want to apply this gold to this group because I'm going to duplicate this and flip it around. I'm going to drag that over here so it's roughly in the same spot. Which I can tell based on the middle area here. It's sort of the same. Duplicate this. We'll just flip it around like that. Drop this bad boy to the bottom. Give ourselves a nice line at the bottom too. That way we have some symmetry going on between the top and the bottom. Then we just gotta drop this down. To there, something like that. And it's also beveled embossed. What is this? Are we just copying? Okay, so this is other gold lines. So it's on the top, but we don't want that on the top. We want that to be on the right side, but we also want it to be on the left side. Like that. Except we grabbed these other lines with it, which is what I did not want to do. Whoops. So we'll grab these. Whoops, lines. We'll drag that back up here to these top lines. So those are on the outside, these are on the outside. All good. We've got a little bit of a funky issue down there because I've got a bevel and emboss on both of these sides. I'll get rid of that. There. Boom. Mike Trout card. That's pretty cool. Let me just do some final tweaks here. So I want to take this Angel Stadium and I want to make sure it does not I want to make sure it's uh, I'm going to group this select this paste it there invert the selection now it's only on the, only on the inside cool I gotta find the other one Okay, we're gonna make this a group. We're gonna find this selection, do that, save. Ah, we got these lines here. What are this? What do you, what is, what is, what are, what are those? Other gold lines. Hide. Ah, see, I took them from the one area, but not the other area. We gotta group these together and name these whoops lines. Just drag this up to the top again like that. Pull back out. Save. New, no, not new smart object via copy. Replace the contents of it. Booklet. Wait for it to finally load after eight years. Boom. There you go. Sports card. So let's put this on something. Let's put this on a cool background to share and actually let's manipulate this.
make this whole thing a little bit bigger like that. And then we'll just drop in a cool texture in the background. Sports textures. We're gonna have some cool grass around here, right? We got some really cool grass in here somewhere. I think it's this. I like to set this to multiply a little bit, darken it up. Oh, that's dumb. Let's not do that. Let's do some actual like. Let's do some baseball. Yeah, let's do some baseball stuff. Idiot. As Dwight would say. And make this just a little bit smaller. And there we go. We got a Mike Trout card. Maybe I tweak some of these. Oh. Oh, no, 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 that's fine. Tweak some of these settings a little bit. we go we got a mic trout card I'm gonna tweak the shadow a little bit make it a little darker that's better and actually I am going to put this back like that here we go we got ourselves a mic trout card angelic packages packages angelic patches uh, I'll save that there I hope you guys enjoyed this this was fun to do I don't don't do a lot of this. I don't design sports cards a lot. I thought it was a good idea to make these um, sports card mock-up templates, which you can use and download. Uh, they're available on my website. Um, but this was a fun little exercise and just, you know, sort of experimenting and making a card, seeing how it would look. I really wanted to use this Mike Trout image, so that's why that came in handy there. Trying to think of some other stuff we can just throw in this background. That would be cool. Thanks, Chris. Just move this foul line over a little bit. A little unrealistic, but it doesn't really matter because the card is fake as well. What I really need to do is take a photo and try and superimpose this like in my case over here with helmets and whatnot. Here, I'll do this. And I'll put on here Bradley, Jack, design, one of one. We'll grab Dharma Gothic. Dharma Gothic. Dharma Gothic. Heavy. Big, 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 big. Space back. Boom, Bradley Jack Design, one of one. Just make this look like that. And we'll just kind of make it look like it's on the dirt. Kind of like that, and then we'll convert it to a smart object, and then we'll go up to filter, and then we'll go up to pixelate, and we'll go to crystallize, and we'll go to three. which does nothing. I'll we'll just go back like this. And we'll duplicate it one more time. Set it to two. Whatever, we don't need text on this. All right, well, thank you for sticking around, guys. Thank you for watching this stream. Hope you guys learned a little bit of something. And just had fun hanging out with me while I made this. This is cool. Hopefully someone thinks this is real because it's not. But I guess we'll see when I post it on Twitter. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy you guys were quick to select uh, your t to spend your time with me tonight. I'll see you guys next week. Make sure to hit that like button at the bottom. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. <laughs>